Right, Saturday, 12.30pm, Chelsea take on Fulham in the Premier League. If we win, we can pull away from Fulham a little bit more. But if Fulham win, they will get closer to us in the league. We want to put the disappointment of Tuesday night's defeat to Middlesbrough at the Riverside Stadium behind us. And in this video, myself and channel fan favourite Josh Aveste are going to list out our team sheets with the teams that we believe Mauricio Pochettino needs to field in order to get us the best possible chance of beating Fulham. But before we get into all that people welcome back to the joey knight podcast if you are new around here and you like the video at the end of it please subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell so that you get a notification every time one of my videos goes live and also please show your appreciation for josh coming in today by subscribing to his channel it is linked in the description to this video let's get into it right so josh how are we feeling mate obviously we're recording this on wednesday last night we lost to middlesbrough we really, really need to put the disappointment at the Riverside Stadium behind us straight away here, don't we? Yeah, we do. And look, you know, Fulham are only coming off, a, you know, an easy win against Arsenal. So, yeah. you know, there should be easy. Uh, it should be an easy win for us. You know, you say, do you know what's funny, mate? I was just looking at the team sheet that they beat Arsenal with there. And I went through it and, you know, considering Fulham are in what, 13th place in the Premier League at the moment, as it stands. Mm. I have to say, I, I quite like a couple of their players. I think I'd probably have a couple of their players. Would you have Raul Jimenez over Brower at the moment? No, he no. wouldn't be one of them. I tell you what, though, Jimenez is starting to come good a little bit now. He is, but after a, a very serious injury, there were a lot Ooh. of people questioning whether he was ever going to be, you know, match fit, ready to go. But, you know, it's brilliant for him. In a moment like that, when he's got such a bad injury, I'm chuffed that he is playing. But for me, I'd still have Brower in. And do you know what? I think they would love to have Brower in their team, to be Ooh. fair. The ones that I'm looking at, mate, Robertson, the left back. Mm. He looks really good. Yeah. American guy. You know, you can see the owners going in for him. I could mm. see, I could see a little bit for him. Every time I see him play, he looks bloody solid on the ball. He looks very calm. Mm. I really like the look of him. I do think though, one of Fulham's weaknesses will be their defence. You know, they can be got at, can be scored against. And obviously Robertson's a good player, but you would fancy us. Especially, I was I was at Craven Cottage earlier on in the season when we went there and beat them 2-0. We had a good spell in that game and then were solid enough for the rest of that game. Game. Look at Fulham at the minute, man, and I think that Paulinho in midfield is going to be massive for them. He's he's a really important player. Yeah, can Bayern just fucking hurry up and sign him already? Because mm. that would be brilliant if he goes just in time for this match. Or us. Or, or we'll us. have him. Would you? We, so let's talk about Paulinho because we've talked about him in a lot of transfer business recently. Mm. Do we have space for another midfielder? Well, this is the thing, like whenever you talk about Chelsea's transfer business, we're always just looking at the injuries and we're going, oh, well, we could use a Paulinho. OK, but let's say miraculously our injury crisis that's been a hoodoo of ours for what, three, four seasons now, let's say it miraculously ends, then you're going, OK, you've got Gallagher in there, who's the highest performing out of the midfielders. Caicedo, who I actually believe is doing a much better job than people are giving him credit for. Enzo, slightly underperforming. And Romeo Lavia, who's ready for any of them to start underperforming, so he can come in and nick their place. Then you've got Ugo Chukwu, who Pochettino seems to like when he's fit and available. So would Paulinho get in there? Whether he'd get in there, you know, that that's a question up for debate. But... Um, would it cause more problems to sign a Paulinho? I don't know. He'd what do you think? He'd, he'd get in our team. Mm. He, he would start for Chelsea. Mm. And the one that the uh, hypothetical, mate, that I'm going to throw to you now is Spurs come in on January the 30th and they offer £55 million for Gallagher. And you could sign, imagine you could sign Paulinho for exactly the same fee or maybe £10 million more. Would you do that deal? Um, no. No. I'm a Conor Gallagher man. I like I like Conor Gallagher as well, but if you Bayern Munich, then, clearly. no, but if Bayern if Bayern Munich rate this guy so highly, and I've watched him a lot, he is bloody good. I think a lot of top top teams are looking at him, top top teams are looking mm. at him. So uh, I wouldn't do it, but I can understand why Todd Bowley would fancy it. Mm. I really do, especially with the bloody FFP stuff that's going to be going on there, amortizing. Then again, him. though, like. Bayern Munich want Eric Dyer, didn't they? Yeah, but, you know, he, he could do a job for Chelsea, couldn't he? Yeah, yeah. Good player. <laughs> Great player. <laughs> Thomas Tuchel has got some weird signings that he wants. He yeah. wants, like, Chaloba, Dia, but then Paulinia. I feel yeah. like Paulinia is on a different level than both those other guys. Yeah, I mean, Eric Dyer did score his penalty against Ecuador, didn't he, for England that time? So. Yeah, and Can't. it was a great penalty. Great pen. Yeah. Great pen. Nothing yeah, yeah. wrong with that. Um, <laughs> right, okay, so we're looking at Fulham. Obviously, a little bit hit and miss so far this season. There was a point, wasn't there, in the season when you were looking at Fulham and you were going, mate, 
you lot could get sucked into a relegation battle. But despite only two wins in their last five in the league, it does look like it's starting to come a little bit better for them. Um, and I think it's going to be a tough, tough test. I'll tell you one thing. For, for whatever reason, Fulham did not turn up at Craven Cottage against us. Um, and we pretty much... And I want to say dominated the game because when I say dominated, a lot of people say, did you watch the first half? Did you watch... Not dominated, but on the stats, it would be domination, you know, possession-wise in terms of shots yeah. on target, the things like game, that. The Borough game, we dominated on stats, Jerry. Oh, yeah, we completely dominated <laughs> Borough. Yeah. But yeah. We did we dominate the game? Uh, Probably it depends not. what you're into, mate. <laughs> yeah. Are I'm you into in? Are, 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 I'm into XG. I'm into XG. I'm into possession. Yeah. And I'm into the, the boys giving effort, you yeah. know? Yeah. So goals are, goals are wishy-washy goals are here or there. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's get straight into the starting lineups that we would like to see in this match against Fulham. Mm. I want your starting lineup first off. Okay. Who are you going with? Okay, right. So Petrovic in goal, uh, only option, but also has been very good. Do you know what? I, I, did he touch the ball against Borough? I can't he even remember same, anything. I think. Didn't do very much, though, really. Mm. It, you know, that's one of those couldn't games... Couldn't have done nothing about the goal, though. No, he couldn't. I'm not blaming him for that at all. Do you know what? That was one of those games where you sat there in the piss rain, mm. freezing cold up in Borough, and you're just like, what the fuck? Why am I a goalkeeper? That's why goalkeepers mm. are mental. But Petrovic starts mm -hmm. for me. Then I'm going Gusto at right back. Let's have Gusto in his natural position. Please. I love him there, and I think he's been brilliant. Mm. And he is going to give Reese a run for his money when Reese is back fit because Gusto's been so good. I mm. love him. Then we'll go with your centre backs, but there is a problem we both know about having Gusto in right back. It then asks the question of who we have in left back. Well, let, but let's we, start off. Shall we start with the centre backs? Let's go with your centre backs. Okay, right. I'm going to go Thiago Silva, and then I'm going to go with the elite performer from the Borough game, which was obviously Colwell. <laughs> Colwell I'll tell you one thing, so I prefer badly. seeing Colwell uh, uh, left centre-back than, than left-back because he's being exposed there time and time again at the moment. And it's not his fault. I feel bad for him, but mm. he's not a left-back. No, he's not. He's not. And then a left-back, as long as this guy's not on crutches, he's back in first-team training, I might give Chilwell a run out here. Mate, if he's I'd, fit enough, you, uh, you, uh, you I would can't, do it. You can't throw Chilwell in there. He's, he's doing first team training, mate. In the injury updates, training, he's with the squad. Training's training, man. And it's not even like it's, for example, right? If uh, we were looking at Connie Chukameka and they were saying he's, he's potentially only out until start of November, saying like that. It's nearly the end of January. We haven't seen him come back. But Connie Chukameka is a young player who hasn't had all that many injury problems and probably fresh, not as many miles on the clock. Ben Chilwell, like, because of Reese James over on the other side, people don't realise how injury-prone Ben Chilwell is. I think if you put him in there from the start, he plays 15 minutes, mate. Yeah, but at, at the end of the day, mate, when are we going to stop giving Chilwell this chance? Like, how much time do we need to give him to come back into the team? How brittle is this guy going to be? You always need to find out how brittle he is. Because if he is just going to fall over and have another four months out, we've got to sign a left back in January. <sighs> we miss Kukurea big time. We've got... No, but seriously, if he can't play in the next couple of weeks... Mm. We have got to sign a left back in January. They've Why? got rid of Matson. Because yeah, we have Kukurel. Kukurel is going to be out for uh, weeks, if not months. Right. He's got an. He's just had ankle surgery for God's sake. Mm. We need to like. This is why the Matson deal doesn't make any sense. And you were tearing your hair out, mate, and going, "Why the fuck are we offloaded him?" It, it just doesn't make any sense at all, but we need some backup there. So if Chilwell isn't going to be fighting fit, ready to play at least half the matches going forward in the rest of the season, they need to sign someone. And so give him a give him a test out here. If he's so training need with the to Boyd. Sign someone. Yeah, because but, you listen to what you just said. If he isn't going to be fit, ready to play, uh, what did you say? At least half the matches? Yeah, at least half the matches. Mate, Literally. Come on. You don't he, think he will? He, Chilwell won't play a fourth. Chilwell won't play a quarter of matches this season. Well, then we need to cut our losses with him now and move on because we. Can't... By the way, I love Ben Chilwell. Me you know? too. Like, I love Ben Chilwell. I think Ben Chilwell is a quality player, but I don't think that Chilwell is ever going to be fit enough to be playing half the matches. And I don't think there's any position, including right back with Reese James, where you can say, "Oh." You only get him for forty five percent of the season, but it's worth it. It's not worth it. It's not. But we, mate, we were saying the same thing about Kante last year. We were literally saying, yeah. What did we thing. do? We got, we we got rid of him because it wasn't but, worth it. But that's it. what I mean. You've got, you've got to sign a left back that is ready to play right now. That's why you've got to look at this Fulham kid. You know, he looks good. He's, he's never been injured. He's played a lot of the games this season. So, well, nah, just bring Lewis Hall back, <sighs> mate. Free. 
yeah, but we're not bringing him. He's gone. You've got to write him off. Newcastle want him. Everything that they've said, he's he's gone. We've sold all of our good left backs. We've sold all of our full backs. Mm. It's that simple. They're they're out of the door. Um, so hold on. Are you seriously bringing Ben Chilwell I would play, in for I'm this? Not I'm even, sticking him on the team I'm not sheet, even yeah? bantering. I'm not even bantering. When I saw the injury update before the Borough mm. game, it said that uh, Carney, Chilwell and Badia Shear were all involved in full team training. And that, that means the, the injury updates are always a little bit um, uh, careful mm. with what they say. If they are actually injured, it says undergoing rehabilitation plan or at the mm. final stages of the re rehabilitation plan. In fact, that's what Ch 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 Wemmerka has been doing for the last three months, as you yeah. say. If if Chiwo is there training with the boys, I would literally play it, start him, and then you've got 45 minutes. If he can't play, then take him off. Are you sure you're happy with Colwell at uh, 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 the left centre-back slot or do you want Fafana in there? <laughs> yeah, fucking play him. If he, as long as he's not got a cast on his leg, I'd play him. No, but I, I just think you've got to you've got to take some risks now. And for me, the Sassy is uh, underwhelming at the moment, big time. Do you agree with that? <laughs> Do you want to have a little... Have your moment on DeSassi. <sighs> he's shit, man. <laughs> isn't he? He's shit, isn't he? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if he's shit. Nah, let's not say he's I, shit. I don't let's think he's shit. shit. No, don't... Yeah, no, that's out of order. Don't say he's shit, Josh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't say he's shit. I just think that I would be dropping him in this game. Put mm. it that way. And every other game for the rest of the season. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no. Now, do you know what? The Sassy's played all right at times, but he's just not up to it. He's just not Chelsea standard. And and he's not 45 million standard. I, not at the moment. I'm bewildered by not it. Not at the moment. For me, like, let me ask you this then. If we're he ranking... Was shocking against Borough. If, if we're ranking our centre-backs, right? Thiago Silva, obviously number one. Silva, number one. Who's the next below him there's such a drop off yeah mate. there's such a drop off because i would say that you're gonna pick out of obviously cool well look Chalibur's out of question sort of thing so i'm not even gonna include him so i would say i would back tiago silva as number one i would then say i'd back benoit badia shill as number two however Benoit Badia-Shill in the first, you know, half of uh, last season when he came to us, or the second half when he came in January, um, I thought he was really good. I thought he didn't really put a foot wrong. But, you know, now this season been very hit and miss. Fofana, I thought he looked good when he was in the team for us. I thought Fofana rarely had a bad game for Chelsea. But he's injury prone and we knew he was injury prone when we signed him. We still had it. Levi Colwell, how can we seriously judge him when he's been played out of position? So it's so hard to answer that question. But whatever, you know, formula I put these guys in, for me at the minute, Axel de Sassi's at the bottom of that list. Would you sign someone in January at centre-back? Yeah, probably. Would you? I think, I think we you? could do... I, honestly, I would. The main reason why I think we, we should... <laughs> It's because Thiago Silva's gone in the summer. Silva's gone, Chalaba's gone. We have no reliance on Fafana being fit. And then you're going on about Axel de Sassi paired with either Benoit Badia-Shil or Levi Colwell. As we know, it's unlikely that you'll see two left-footed centre-backs in the same team. So yeah. it's not going to be Colwell and Badia-Shil together. Um, yeah, so if we don't sign someone, what, next season? De Sassi, Badia-Shil, de Sassi, Colwell, no thanks. We need someone's experience to replace... Thiago Silva. We need, honestly, mate, we need a 30-year-old defender. We need someone that's been there, someone. done it. I know someone. Give me a name. Varane. Come on. You're no, I don't want to leave. He just came piss. into my head. <laughs> you're taking the absolute piss. He's going to be playing in Saudi in January. Uh, By the end of January, he could be playing in Saudi. Fuck it, old man. It's Delict? Not, it's not good. Would you yeah, like yeah he, he, he gives me a Chelsea vibe sometimes. I think he could be half decent. Don't watch enough of him, though, to be honest. So, yeah. Anyway, let's move on to your midfield. What I would say before I would say that is if Chuo isn't fit, I would go Alpha Gilchrist. Yeah. I would, I would back him. And I would rather he be on the left and Gusto in his natural position. Just play one player out of position, please. Mm. You know, Gilchrist can do a job. He, he can invert. He doesn't need to be going up and down. So that maybe that's the more realistic pick, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll leave it with that. Then as my pivot, I'm going to go Caicedo and Gallagher. I don't think Enzo is fit. I, th I think watching him again last night, he looked stiff. He looked mm. like he was out of the game. And so for me, just like if, if he's not fit, if he absolutely isn't fit and it's a hernia problem, why are we, why are we playing him? Yeah. It's, it's just weird. He hasn't looked himself for months, has he? 
No, he hasn't looked himself so far this season. I actually thought on the opening day against Liverpool is pretty impressive. Yeah. Chelsea's beaten the life out of it at the minute. I feel so doom and gloom with it. But yeah, I thought on the opening day against Liverpool, Enzo was pretty impressive. A couple of good games I've seen him in here and there, but for the most part, no, I don't think he I don't think he has looked himself. Um and, and I will give the praise as I have done to Caicedo because I think Caicedo's coming under a lot of stick. But actually, Caicedo is one of the players, and it's not saying much, but in a time with a lot of un- uncertainty where we can't really hang our hat on many players at all. Caicedo is one of the ones where I feel quite safe with him. Yeah. So. I just think the the way that the reason why it's not necessarily working out with that pivot at the moment is because they're so similar. I do think Gallagher and Caicedo want to be picking up the ball and playing it in similar areas. And they, they do very similar things. They're destroyers. They run around, they break up play and they also do like to get up and down. Like, but Caicedo is more of that Kante role. When he came to Chelsea, we thought he was a complete DM, but he actually wants to be, bombing up and down and getting goals as well. Like he took a really good shot mm. yesterday in the in the Borough game. So um, I, I I don't think going forward that is going to be the best pivot that we have at Chelsea Football Club. Do you know what's mad? But I think do it's you know, the only one we have. Do you know what's mad? We spent all of that money on the two hundred plus million pound pivot, Enzo and Caicedo, and I think both me and you right now, as well as a lot of the Chelsea fan base, are saying. I don't know whether that is the best two to have there. I think a fully fit Enzo and a fully fit Caicedo playing together when they're on fire. I think uh, I think uh, they are good. It's a bit small though, isn't it? It's it's a bit small, but I don't think as a DM you need to be massive. Like the the era of the Matiches is I don't think it exists in modern football anymore. Like but the, but the again, the only other player that I could think would improve that right now is a Paulinho esque player. I'm talking about available players, mm. people that are on the market ready to go. And and I do think that Paulinho would give us something different from what Enzo would have, but then you're just putting in a destroyer. Mm. Like he is a passer of the ball, but he's not as good a passer of the ball as Enzo. And and again, when you see Enzo play, he can whip a ball through and he puts some very good passes. And also he's the only one that switches the play in the entire team. Mm. So I, I, I actually think Enzo is harshly done by. And the reason why he hasn't been good enough recently, mate, is because he's been injured. Mm. Do you know what I think he, he could be harshly done by here is like, when I look at Caicedo, definitely Caicedo can be better. He can definitely be better. But I don't think we're going to see all that much more from him than we've seen. I think he's just going to do a solid job, be consistent, hopefully be injury free and stay on the pitch um, and perform to a little bit better than the standard he's already setting so far. But I don't think we're going to see anything massive that we haven't seen from Caicedo yet. Whereas with Enzo, I truly believe that there's so much we haven't seen from him that he as a player can do because we've seen it, you know, obviously for Benfica and for the Argentinian national team and whatnot. And for those reasons, that's the one that... I'm probably, I don't want to say more disappointed in because that's putting a negative spin on it, but I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm like, I want to see more from you. I really want to see more and I think you can. So yeah, that's that for me. What about in your number 10? Who are you going with? So I'm going to go Cole Palmer in the number 10. Mm-hmm. I think I was so disappointed with his finishing uh, against Borough, but my God, he's been our best player. So, and I actually do think he is better as a number 10. I like his intelligent pressing. You saw that with the the pass that he intercepted and then took that shot, which was Mm. very weak shot. I mean, he could have put it almost anywhere else and it would have gone in. Um, but I liked that he was breaking up play and I, and I like him in that number 10, but we've gone on about how we feel he's better as a number 10 before, haven't Mm. we? Yeah. I don't think with Cole Palmer, there's anything massively, uh, massively to worry about at all. I think with Cole Palmer, yeah, he, he missed a couple of good chances. I don't even want to call them sitters. Like, mm. you know, the one where the goalkeeper spills it against Borough. I don't even think that's a sitter. Cold night. You, you, you're half expecting it because you made the run, but you're almost half not expecting it. You've made the run for the sake of it sort of thing. I think the context on it, if he had a missed that one, but then put in one of the other ones, no one's really talking about it nah. anyway. So. But also, Joey, just slap your head on it. Mm. Just get your head down on one of those. Mm. I was just screaming at him. Just just head it. Mm. It's easier to head it. It's quite high. So you're going Palmer in the 10. What about yeah. on the right wing? So on the right wing, I'm going to go for Nonny. Mm-hmm. I reckon he's done enough to earn a place. And I am officially resigning my fact my my place in the sterling fan club i'm officially saying now that sterling can leave you're out i'm out he's he can leave the football club he can leave with my blessing i am officially after the borough game i am done with raheem sterling right so josh is out the sterling fan club could you pass your fan club <laughs> key over there we go i'll take that off you josh is out of the sterling fan club so if let me let me just hypothetically 
Let's say Mudrik goes for on goal, one on one with a keeper, he scores, your reaction is Come on. <laughs> Sterling goes for on goal, one on one with a keeper, he scores, your reaction is Fuck off for him. Really? Nah. Even if he even if he scores. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I see what I see what you've done there. I um I think that Raheem scores some absolute bangers. And, mm. you know, the free kicks that he's been getting in recently have been brilliant. Mm. Fair play to him. Scored some great goals against teams that he probably should score goals against. Mm. The overall play is something that I'm so sick of. I'm Let me so ask you a question. done with Let Raheem. Let me ask you a question. Um, how long did it take you to stop sort of, you know, hyping up that Raheem Sterling free kick? Were you, were you over it within a day? Oh, mate, I was over it after about 30 seconds. I okay. went in and I was celebrating. They went, oh, it's Raheem okay. Sterling. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, because I hate him that much. Are you are you, are you you <laughs> over the uh, Mudrick goal against Arsenal No, yet? I'm not. No, no. no. I'm going to live on that forever. It's funny, isn't it, mate? Because you do have favourites. You do you do absolutely have favourites. But I think you and I go to a lot of games and we, we look at Raheem and his overall body language and what mm. he brings to the team. And uh, I look at the wages that he's on. And I look at the the status that he has in the team and his overall sort of like credibility in the game. And I just find it so incredibly disappointing. Mm. And I feel that we could spend that money so much better elsewhere in the team, the wages that he's on. I just, um, I'm just over it. I'm over the Problem language play. Probably wouldn't get a fee from now, would we? Or, or, or Saudis put up 30 uh, mil for Saudi, Sterling? Yeah, I mean, if the Saudi boys can come in and give us a decent amount of money and take his wages off the wage bill. I, I honestly think, not just me, I think the, the owners would, would jump at it. Mm. I really do. Potentially, potentially. I think Raheem Sterling wastes a lot of chances. I think he gets a lot of chances. And I think that certain uh, players wouldn't have the light shone on them anywhere near as much because they just don't get those those chances or into those positions. I'm sure some sort of stats would back me up there. He's a divisive player. He splits opinion a lot of the time. And, and, and he can even split the opinion of... Um, you know, fans as the season goes on. Sometimes I've been very, very much banging the drum of Raheem Sterling's one of our first names on the team sheet. And you'll probably see in a second when I do my team sheet, I'm not even including him in this one. So mm. you're dropping Raheem Sterling. You're starting Madawaki there. Yep. What about on the other wing? Who are you starting left wing? I'm going to go Mudrick on the left. I yeah. think when he came on, he, look, Mudrick needs a, needs a start, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does. He does. But also, right, Mudrick came on and I'm, uh, you know, uh, open enough to say that Mudrick made a few mistakes when he came he was, on. He was rubbish. So was everyone. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> He made a few mistakes. The touches weren't good. It was a it was a really soaking wet pitch. He's not. Can I just Tough sorry game. to interrupt you? I keep doing this, but it's not so much about the touches not being good. His decisions weren't very intelligent in the game, no, were they? He, no. he he was running into areas he shouldn't have been running into and avoiding the ones that he should have been running but, into. But then again, he was very were... obvious. He was cutting inside or, or sort of outside. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then, but then again, right? There are other there are other sides of it. He put in an unbelievable cross almost at the last kick of the game. He did. He did. That we probably should have scored. Alfie Gilchrist got his header on it. It went out for a corner kick. And then there were other moments where you sort of go, Mudrick needs an uh, an overlapping wing back to support him. And back in the day, that would have been chill well imagine Chilwell and, and Mudrick on that side mm. they would be dangerous because if you're going to man mark Mudrick you've got to then go for for Chilwell mm. you've got to watch him overlap Colwell and Mudrick and it was very evident in the body language and what we saw they got they got no partnership they got no telepathy they've got no chemistry They've between nothing, two of them. But it's just the way we're setting up as well, mate. That left back is an inverted uh, centre back. Mm. That's literally all it is. The, the, the only width that we have is on the right-hand side, mate. So um, I, I, I think he will be so much better with a proper fullback. Mm. So much better. What about a number nine? You starting number nine? Who are you going with through the middle? I am. I'm going to go for Broya. I yeah. think these. this is the, the runner games where if Nkunku was fit, I would be playing him and maybe I would be starting him as a false nine. Um, and actually, the only reason why I was calling out for a false nine is because Nkunku's back and he is a player that has played there and scored goals as a, as a striker. Mm. When you looked at that team last night, like he, Palmer can do a job at the false nine, but he wouldn't be, that wouldn't be my first way that I'd want to set up. I was interested to see how it goes, but I do feel that's almost a bit of a failed experiment now. And I feel we got to back Broyer until Jackson comes back. Luckily, there aren't that many games. And, I, and you know, I don't wish Jackson's national team poorly by any means, but I actually am now really excited for Jackson to, to come mm -hmm. back. 
Mm, that's not a sentence I thought I'd hear you saying this season. <laughs> Let me give you my team quickly. Please I'm going to start off with Petrovic in goal. My back line's going to upset you ever so slightly, so just bear with me because I am going to be playing a player out of position. I don't believe there's any way, bearing in mind that I don't judge Levi Colwell as actually being a left-back, I don't believe there's any way we can do a back line here without playing a player out of position because it's my opinion that Ben Chilwell's just not going to be ready. So for that reason, I'm going to go Alfie Gilchrist at right. Right back. I didn't think he set the world on fire when he played there against Preston, but I didn't think he was bad. Um, and I think if my options are Gilchrist and De Sassi, then that's why I'm going with him there. And then you're, you're sort of thinking, well, what about Melagusto? We get to him. I'm going Thiago Silva and Levi Colwell in the centre-back pairing. And over at left-back, as much as it pains me to do so, I am going to go with Malagusto. I think malagusto has been decent when he's played there. He switched there in the match that I was at in the League Cup quarterfinals against Newcastle. Looked good from that position. Also, he was there against Preston. Whipped the ball in for the Broa header. You know, it was on a plate for him. Um, and I think, do you know what? Regardless of where he plays at the moment, Malagusto... In recent weeks, you know, Cole Palmer's right up there. Conor Gallagher's dropping off a little bit, but still good, good level of performer. I think Caicedo has been pretty decent. People don't agree with that. I can get in stick about saying that, but Melo Gusto has been right up there with our best performers. So he definitely needs to be on the pitch. Unfortunately for him, he's going to be over in that left back slot. The sooner we get Kukurea back, for me, the better. Um, in the pivot, I am going to go with Enzo and Caicedo. And I am hearing what you're saying about Enzo's fitness and potentially maybe, you know, maybe so. We've not got a lot of options there. Andre Santos has been recalled back, but he's going straight out somewhere. He's, he's going, going to Brazil, he's... playing with the national team, the under-20s. Yeah. He's going back to play with them and uh, he's going to tear it up there. Yeah. I'm looking forward to him coming back. I actually hope that that means that he will come back and play for Chelsea because it would be difficult to loan him out afterwards. Well, I quite think we could do with him in there right now. We could. So it's a bit of a head scratcher for me, but I don't know. I'm going to go Enzo and Caicedo there. I've got more certainty about Caicedo putting in a good performance. Enzo, I'm saying it week in, week out. And obviously there's there's factors there, aren't there? Like this potential hernia injury, if he does have that. But if not, please let's see something. Please let's see something in this match from Enzo. Enzo actually made his debut in a match I was at against... Fulham, nil-nil draw, I think it was. He looked pretty good in that game. Not the one Jal Felix got sent off in a couple of weeks later. We brought him back to the bridge. In the number 10, I'm going with Conor Gallagher. Um, I am going to go with Conor Gallagher there. I'm going to go Cole Palmer on the right wing. I'm going to go Amanda Broha in the number nine. He did get a goal against Fulham. Very, very lucky at Craven Cottage, but he did get a goal against Fulham. And another man that got a goal against Fulham, who I will be starting on left wing, is Mikhailo Mudrik. We've got to see him in there from the start now, man. I actually think it's weird because when Mudrik was getting game time, he didn't seem that confident. Now he's not getting as much game time and I actually think when he's coming on, he's showing more glimpses of confidence. I think he's building from the fact that he knows that the fan base is starting to get behind him a little bit now and we're wanting to see him on the pitch. Um, you know, these players do go on social media. They are all watching the podcast right now. So, you know, shout out to you lot, but make sure you're on the training pitch doing some actual work, getting some wins <laughs> under the belt. Um, but... Yeah, like, I think that uh, Mudrick can see that his reception from the fan base is growing and it, it, it's building towards more positivity. I think we're seeing that on the pitch. And I think that he could be a bit of a game changer for us in this match. So it means that I'm leaving Madueke out of the lineup. Sterling. Nothing nothing too personal with his performances, but I just, just would leave him out of this one. Sterling, not going to be in the lineup for me. Um, I think until the end of the season, we're very much going to stick with this midfield free of Gallagher, Enzo, Caicedo. And for that reason, I just want to see it tried time in, time out, because I don't think we can tinker too much and just expect things to happen. We do need to progress with each other. We do need to build, form relationships, build bonds. And hopefully coming off the back of abysmal performance against Middlesbrough, them boys that I've just named there can can go out and give us a to cheer about against do, Fulham. Do, do you know the question I have about your team is... Do do you feel that it might be slightly defensive? Because when I'm looking at the three that you've named, mm. I'm looking at them and sort of going, is this a Jorginho, Kante, Kovacic over again? And just seeing they all want to, they are all more defensively minded. Mm. I don't know if any of them are going to be the late arrivals in the box. Even Gallagher, like Gallagher gets up and down, but like, 
<sighs> I want a bit of a poacher mm. in the box. That's why I'm not, playing not, Palmer. The thing there. is, mate, you like you say about it being defensively minded, yeah. but actually, if you look at it, Gallagher's been what the player that's laid on the most assists. I think maybe even including Cole Palmer could be He's wrong got on that four front. Assists, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not a lot, is no. it? Caicedo, we're saying about him being that uh, that defensive role, but actually creatively, he's been quite good. He's been the one, you know, threading passes on the edge of the area, albeit not to direct goal scoring opportunities, but playing the ball about there, having shots of his own. Enzo, we know, was brought in. Yeah, I came to be a bit of a deep line playmaker, but be a playmaker nonetheless. So I don't think I am going that defensive there. And other than that, the only thing I could possibly do is drop Enzo, bring Gallagher back there, Palmer into the 10. Um, I'm still undecided whether Palmer's better in the 10 or on the right wing. I know, he, I, I know he ain't great in the false nine off uh, the other night's account. So... I don't know. I don't know. It's a match that, look, I, I can't lie, I'm not massively optimistic for, to be honest. I can see a nil-nil draw in this one. But let's hope that Chelsea can do the double over our closest rivals, which is obviously Fulham. Let's have a score prediction from yourself for this match. I'm going to go uh, draw, same as you. I'm going to go for a 1-1. Mm. I do think they're coming off a good result against Arsenal. I, I don't think it'll be as easy at, at home for us. We Our home form is shite. Mm. So I just, I just think we're going to have a bit of a hangover uh, and we will probably score second. Mm. The Chelsea of old would battle back, put in a performance against this and quash any of the concerns in the fan base's minds following that defeat to Middlesbrough. But unfortunately for us, we're not the Chelsea of old. We are where we are at the minute. I think the best that we can hope for is to get over the line without looking that good, which is crazy. We've got the personnel there to be looking good. But that is at this current moment in time where I think we stand the best we can hope for. So hopefully we can get over the line against them. I think I'm going to have to go with you. I think I'm going to have to back a draw and I could see a nil-nil or a one-all draw in this one. Mm. Disappointing, really, isn't it's it? It's scary that that's the position that we're in, mate, is that we're a Chelsea Football Club playing someone in 13th place mm. and at home uh, in the early kickoff and all we can say is a, is a draw. It's not good. It is what it is. But people, I want you lot to let me know your thoughts. What do you think of mine and Josh's lineups? Would you change them? If you've got time, please put your lineups in the comment section. I really look forward to reading them as I always do. Thank Josh again, once again, for coming over today by subscribing to his channel. It's linked in the description. Also, if you are wondering where my podcasts are brought to you from, they are from podcast room in Barnes. I'm going to link the studio's website in the description to this video if you want cheap affordable really good quality content um brought to you in the london area the southwest london area head over to their website inquire with them tell them you came through me and i'm sure they'll sort you out so that's linked in the description people if you're not already subscribe to the channel hit the like button on this video to help me pump more of this sort of content out there for you guys and i will see you all in the next one